Hey, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video, we're just going to review how skills are supposed to be used in MCE. So it's it's kind of echoing the talk we had on the tech design, but we uh, now I can show you more in details what I meant when I was talking about skills and subclasses of skills. So. If we head over our multiplayer combat editor folder and skill folder, we can we can see there are three blueprint classes. Uh, these are three actors components. You can check out the tooltips. It's going to tell you what it is, but I'm also going to cover that up. So the skill, the, the BP skill is the mother class, is the, the parent class of all other skills we are going to create. This it, it streamlines, it features, uh, it has a lot of built-in features uh, to do everything we need, like summoning stuff, applying crowd controls, uh, whatever we want. And then, child of that class, we have, and we are never, we are basic, basically never going to create child classes of skill directly. We are never going to say, hey, we want a new blueprint class of the skill of the type BP skill. We are basically never going to do that, except if you are an advanced user which wants to create new archetypes, new categories of skills. So this, this brings us to active and passive skills. So both are different categories of skills which can be contained in your skill overlay. So there is a built-in feature in the skill manager, which is the skill overlay, which is able to display, uh, it's going to display the skills you have on your screen, and it's going to have several lists of skills, which belongs to the different categories. So your skill overlay is going to have a, net, a list of active skills and a list of passive skills. And once you hit the maximum amount of active skills or passive skills you can learn, the overlay is going to tell you that you cannot learn more skills. So that's why we have these two categories. And they also have a difference uh, in where the active skill is has the possibility to get pressed and released. Uh, and the passive skills is always active. So the active skills only activates when you press or release an input and the passive skills the passive skill is always active. And so basically skills have several events we are going to use to build the logic behind them and we're going to see that real quick. So if we are creating we are just going to I'm just going to create a class. Do not do this. I'm going to create a child class of skill, which we are never going to do, except if you are an advanced user. I'm going to double click that and I'm going to enter the blueprint editor. And I'm going to bring down uh, a few events we have. Just to show you the logic behind skills and how they work. I'm sorry, I've already bring that up. So I'm getting I'm getting a lot of events just to show you I, how it works. So they are belonging to the same type, to the same category like this. So how do skills work? A skill is an actor component which is triggered by the events, uh, by whenever we want. For instance, when we press left mouse button, we trigger uh, the skill we have in front of us. And what happens at that moment? When we trigger, when we start the skill, when we start the skill, this event gets triggered. And we can, we are always going to drag a wire out of the authority and say switch on authority. And we are always going to, to do this. And this is going to give us, this is giving us the possibility to 
take act to, to take actions when the skill gets used. And we have the possibility to trigger the actions we want on every machine, which means everyone is in multiplayer is going to see the actions we plug there. And we are going to be able to specify actions to be taken only on the server and only on the client. And this is for intermediates to advanced user. Most, most of us, uh, most of the time, we're going to trigger stuff on every machine because we want everything to be seen by everyone. Whereas if you for instance, if you had an if you add something to do here, it's only going to trigger on the on the screen of the player who, who pressed the skill. And if you add the same gameplay stuff here, it's going to trigger on every on the screen of every player playing the game. And then when the skill stops, it's going to call that event, which has the same kind of logic. And when the skill gets cancelled, we have also the possibility to do that. What's the difference between stop and cancel? The difference is that maybe you got cancelled because your character got stunned or crowd controlled in any way, or maybe you pressed a key and it cancelled your skill. And maybe you want to do different things if you cancel and if you stop the skill. Stopping automatic uh, triggers when the skill is ended, for instance. So it's not when you get crowd controlled, it's when you ended the cast of your skill. You basically ended the skill action. So for instance, if we have a skill that triggers an animation, it's going to start when the anima you're going to say play animation there and the skill is automatically going to end when the animation ends. But if you got crowd can and maybe when the animation ends, you wanted to trigger, uh, let's say, a, a big area effect which damage everyone. And but you got crowd control in the middle of the skill. So it canceled the effect and it did, the, the skill actually never got the chance to end. So it's, it won't trigger your area damage of effect. So most of the time we're going to say, for instance, play animation and, and do stuff. And then we're going to say, or I don't know, trigger a spawn a projectile or stuff like that. And then we have other events. So create stat list. This is just going to be the place where we set up the different metrics of our skill. So mana costs, uh, stuff like that. Cooldown, recast, tax, a, a lot of settings. We are always going to override this and call this in our skills. This is the same kind of events. This is an event set up passive effect effects. This is an event we are going to call to add a bunch of passive effects, obviously, to our skill. For instance, it's the, the skill always is always improving our amount of health, is always increasing our health by 50. Or for instance, when we hit 50% uh, health, uh, an effect triggers, I don't know, we receive a buff or something. This is what we are going to call to add passive effects to our skill. And you don't need set up passive effects. You can call this event in active skills. Active skills have the possibility, have the ability to, they, they can have passive effects. So you can create skills like in League of Legends, which, which have uh, a passive effect and also an active effect when you press it. And the other events we are going to call when dealing with skills, when creating skills, is going to be the trigger anim effects. So we're going to drag a wire out of the notify type and we're going to click that. Another video is going to go into the 
is uh, is going to cover that that specific subject, but but we're going to just learn the logic here. When you play an animation here, I, previously I said maybe we were going to play animations uh, on every machines on e for every players. So for instance, if we play an animation there, and if we had a bunch of logic to our animation montage. If we set up our anim animation montage in a certain way, it's going to call that event, and we're going to be able to trigger specific gameplay events at specific animation timings. So that's that's most of the time what we're going to to use to set up when and what happens in our skill when our skill gets triggered. So we're, I'm just going to delete that. So for instance, and, and then we have what I called behavior, a folder behavior. And in that folder, we have montage skill, AI skill, and weapon skill. We're just going to open up montage skill just to see what I did there. If I'm going to our to my event graph, we can see we have the event trigger start effects, which we've which we've uh, we've we we just see that event. Uh, I just I just show you that event, and in there I coded something. I said whenever the montage skill gets triggered on every machine it's going to play an animation montage and then i created a lot of subclasses of that class so i create that's why i was so i'm i'm going to try to explain that a bit a bit better When I show you all the events you can call to build up your skill, uh, I show you, I, I, I told you, you can play an animation, for instance. So I called the node play anim montage. But, you, but if we create 100 skill, I don't want to type in play anim montage 100 times. For instance, if I'm building an action RPG, I know all of my skills are going to play anim montage. So what I did was create a, a type of skill, which is a montage skill, which is a child class of active skill. And I said montage skill, play an anim montage. And then what I can do is create child of montage skill. And any child I create, I create out of montage skill is going to play an animation. So I basically wrapped up some logic, some generic logic, which I'm using for all, all of the skills of my games in order not to call play any montage each time I need to create a new skill in my game. And most of the time when you are creating child classes, child classes of active skill, you are just actually wrapping up functions for your, for the the skills you need in your game. So montage skill is basically a, a, BA, a bunch of functions I wrapped up for action RPGs, for instance. And weapon skill is the same type of things I did for uh, first person abilities, first, first person skills and weapons. And I created child classes of weapon skills which are automatic fire, charged fire, and semi-automatic fire. And these are all sub-behaviors of weapon skills. And they are, they are behaving a certain way. For instance, automatic fire is... When I press my button, automatic fire starts. When I release my button, automatic fire stops. But semi-automatic fire is behaving a different way. When I press the button, it shoots once and then it does nothing. 
This is because in most FPS, FPS game, you have different types of, of weapons and they behave, they behave differently. So I wanted to wrap up these different types of behaviors because I didn't want it to, to say for each automatic skill I create, hey, when I press you, you start, and when I release you, you stop. So I created these wrapped up behaviors there. And then when I want to create uh, an automatic fire, whoops, when I want to create, for instance, uh, a M4, uh, a weapon, a counter-strike weapon, which uh, which is an assault rifle. I can just create a child class of automatic fire and say uh, what it shoots. So this is how the skill editor is meant to be used. You are creating child classes of skill if you want to create a new skill category, but most of the time you are not going to do this. Then you can create child classes of active skill or passive skill to wrap up some functions which are going to be used for all of the skills in your game. And then you create child classes of these behaviors to generate sub behaviors like I did for other weapons or to create game content for your game. So for instance, I created child classes of montage skill in the example folder where you can go in skills, prefab, montage, all of these skills are child classes of skill montage. So all of these skills are basically triggering, playing an animation and triggering gameplay effect based on them. Whereas in the weapons folder, you can see we have three different folders. So for instance, in there, all four of, all these skills are child classes of semi-automatic fire. So they all trigger once when I press my input. Whereas these skill which is in automatic fire in the automatic fire folder is a skill which triggers as long as I hold my inputs and of course as long as I have uh, ammunition remaining in my weapon. So this is how this is the main logic behind the skill. So it's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.